let's talk a minute about the systems that actually execute SQL programs. Those are called database management systems. They keep track of tables, and they also perform the operations on tables that the programmer specifies in a select statement. So when two tables are joined together, it's the responsibility of the database management system to build the joined table so that it can be processed. And you could imagine building a database management system using just the built-in sequence operations in Python, filter and map. The where clause of a select statement filters according to an expression. The column descriptions just after the word select tell you how to compute the final result columns, mapping over the resulting rows after filtering. So while it's possible to build a database management system without a lot of code, actual database management systems are considerably more complicated. Here is a diagram from a kind of abstract database management system from a textbook, and you can see there's a lot of parts. So the relational query processor is what executes SQL statements. So we have to parse the query just like in any programming language. And we have to execute the command that's specified by the query. But instead of just saying, apply filter to the rows of the join table and then map the results to build the new columns, we can see something more complicated. The query might be rewritten so that many different queries that are similar can all be processed in exactly the same way. And then there's this thing called the query optimizer which I'll talk about in a minute. And finally, the plan executor is not just evaluating the source code directly, but instead is executing some plan that is the result of query optimization. This is really one of the most important parts of a database management system, is that it's actually going to decide how to execute your query in a way that it thinks is most efficient, given multiple different options that would result in the same output. So the reason I call SQL a declarative language is that we specify what the output looks like. But when we write a select statement, we're not actually specifying how exactly the computation will be carried out. It's not the case that we always build the joined table and then filter it and then map the results. Sometimes the processing happens in a different order because that order would result in more efficient computation of the same result. There's also a lot of other parts. Transactional storage managers are there in order to make sure that if two different users are accessing and updating the same database at the same time, nothing breaks. Then there are a great deal of utilities that help manage the database itself, so you can monitor how much it's been used, you can edit it in ways that don't involve SQL statements, and um, you can keep track of the resources that are being used, such as the total memory of the system. Oftentimes, database management systems are accessed remotely, meaning that one computer holds the database and another computer is issuing the SQL statements. And so that's why you need a communications manager and database management systems do other things too. That's why there's a process manager. But the point is that a database management system is a large piece of software typically that handles multiple different aspects of working with data. And even the part that executes SQL select statements is more complicated than in an imperative language like Scheme because of this idea of query optimization. So what is query planning anyway? Well, the manner in which tables are filtered, sorted, and joined does affect execution time. So let's look at an example that we saw last time, selecting the parents of curly-furred dogs. So here we had a table of parent-child relationships and a table that told us what kind of fur each dog had. We joined those two together, made sure we only kept the rows where the child name matched the name of the dog with the fur, and then we filtered for curly-furred dogs. It turns out there are multiple ways to compute the correct result. We could compute this join exhaustively, or we could skip parts of it. And that's because we know in advance that we're only going to keep rows where child equals name. And we also have this other component that says we're only interested in rows where fur equals curly. 
and that can help make the join more efficient. So one thing we could do is join all rows of parents to all rows of dogs, then filter by child equals name and fur equals curly. That's the most obvious thing to do. But it's quite inefficient because when you join all rows of parents to all rows of dogs, you build a very large intermediate table. Instead, you could join only the rows of parents and dogs where child equals name, and filter by fur equals curly. This can be made more efficient by first sorting the parents' table and the dogs' table. You sort the parents' table by child, you sort the dogs' table by name, and then, instead of finding all pairs, which is quadratically many different rows, we just walk through the lists in order, in order to discover all of the times in which child equals name, just like when we intersected sorted sets. So now we've avoided making a large table at all. We only ever built the table of parents and joined with dogs where the rows were coherent, child equals name. We first could have filtered dogs by fur equals curly, then join the result with all the rows of parents, and then filter by child equals name. That would give us the same result, and we never would have had such a large dogs table because we would have filtered it right away. And finally, we could have filtered the dogs table to have only fur equals curly, and then use the same trick we did up here to join only the rows of this result, the subset of dogs, with the parents table by sorting them both and then looking for instances where the child value in a row of parents is equal to the name value in the row of this filtered version of dogs, which could be quite efficient indeed. So the point of building a database management system with query planning is that it considers all four of these options, guesses which one will be the fastest, and then picks that.